Welcome hobby fans, back to Reforged Armies, part 4 of the Silver Knights building paint. We left you with Captain Kintia struggling to build his forces against the unending tide of the world leaders. In the last episode, we sent in 10-man tactical squads. For each 10-man tactical squad, what better transport than a rhino? We've got a rhino that was a good deal. Of course, it was a good deal. Come with an extra armament, which was a missile launch coming out of the top. Super cool, but doesn't really fit the aesthetic we're going for. Let's just get into it. We'll figure it out as we go. The Rhino tank has an illustrious history in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, including being one of the first tanks I bought for Space Marines. I remember a game in Toy World in the town I live where I had a five-man tactical squad, a Rhino and a Captain, and that was all I had in a four-player game. It had a hunter-killer missile that missed, of course it missed, and the game was so fun that they let me reload it and shoot it again. I can't remember if it hit or not, but it's moments like those that really made for Warhammer. I remember that, and I was probably 14. So far, this build started incredibly well. This ship has done a fantastic job, stripped this model back essentially to the bare plastic, which will make it much easier to paint. What we've got to do now is remove the top hatch, and like I said before, replace it with a traditional Rhino hatch. This Rhino had the privilege of playing a game against the World Eaters, which is where this Crusade narrative has come from. It's taken an absolute battering from one of the Forge Fiends, Plasma Cannon slamming against the hull, it's been awesome to transport those tank marines up the field so they can cap objective. You can just imagine it screeching up the battlefield in support of Captain Kintia. I spent an enormous amount of time just buying bits off Facebook Marketplace and I think it's just about to come to fruition. Not only have we been able to find the top hatches that we wanted, but now we're searching for a pintle mounted storm bolter. Not easy to find, but it's definitely going to be an iconic piece for this rhino. I saved us all a lot of time by editing out the search. It does show you how motivated you can get. Looking at all those opportunities, I'm definitely keen to search through. I see a lot of Dark Angels pieces and that always makes me want to paint some green. The build part of this tank is essentially done. We've taken the existing tank, reforged it into something that's more my style and we're just going to mount the Pindle Mounted Storm Bolter. You can see the model has some battle damage, some scratches and whatnot. I actually think during the painting step that will only enhance the look. The tanks of the Silver Knight Space Marines have been through a lot after all. This Silver Knights project has always been about keeping it simple. We're going to paint this rhino essentially the same as we painted the land speeder. Those colours mimic the infantry even though it's on a bigger scale. This lets the army be really cohesive on the battlefield. One thing to remember for your hobby journey, each of these models has multiple coats of paint. It really only needs one coat to show on YouTube. Of course, you typically need more than that to get the finished product you want. Because it doesn't have a huge offensive power, sometimes it gets overlooked and that's really to the opponent's detriment as its real power is capturing objectives, either through dropping off the tactical marine or through it itself capturing those objectives. In one particular game, the Rhino advanced up the field, delivered the tactical marines to the aid of Captain Kintia as he was getting swarmed by a world leader's berserkers. In this game, amazingly, Captain Kintia was able to withdraw and combine between the tactical squad, Rebus. They took the entire unit of world leader berserkers down. This was just, of course, before Angron swooped in and cleaned them up as he's wont to do. The Rhino valiantly stood in front of Angron to give them the time. D6 plus one or plus two wounds on each attack at something like strength 16. Unfortunately, the Rhino, as steadfast as it was, couldn't stand up to Angron's might. We know between the, the Rhino's durability and the Space Marine's two room durability, it's held out for quite a long time. I 
I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really love the Artist Opus dry brushes. I just found the biggest one I had and used their textured palette. A lot of making this army stand out is instead of doing highlights directly on each panel, we'll do a dry brush all over. That does include the black bits, which get a real gritty metallic look. Which again, the purpose is paint fast, but bring the army really cohesive so we can actually get something finished. Picking out some simple details with Cabalite Green, like the lenses and headlamps, just to make sure they tie in with the rest of the army. There's so much to see with the Silver Knight. They are absolute steadfast, resilient marine, and it's great to have been able to build some of that extended firm against the fury that is the world eaters. And with that, it's mine, and hopefully everybody's, favourite time, it's the Grand Review. Thanks for joining me in this next installment. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I'm enjoying producing it. Really look forward to bringing you more soon.